see everybody if we could come on in. We're going to start off with a song. It's always good to have gratitude in our hearts for everything that God has done for us. So we're going to sing thank you, Lord, if we could stand up. Let's sing to God. Here we go. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. And thank you, Lord, for blessing me. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. and loud, boisterous crowd, you know, here. Uh, let me welcome you to, this is our 7 p.m. monthly All Church Midweek. How about that, all right? And uh, we're here at Austin Ave, and we're here with live stream too. So let's say hello to our brothers and sisters on live stream. They were all here at 7 p.m. You know, some of us needed a couple extra minutes to get in the door. Also, our teens and our middle school students, they're up in the lighthouse. They're having their special midweek tonight. So if you're in that category, you'll want to head up there in just, uh, in just a few minutes. I think you, you, we got to start off by thanking some people. How about the parking lot attendants who are just out there, rain, snow, weather, whatever it is, they're there. They're trying to keep us all safe here. And how about our children's ministry workers next door? So we can have children's ministry on our all church midweek. Amen to that. So many great volunteers. And how about Let's make some noise for all the people who volunteer here at North River. How about that, all right? Yeah. All right, make it a little louder, a little more loud noise. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The Braves game got canceled because they were afraid of the weather, but we're here loud and proud and ready to be disciples and to worship God. You know, so classically, uh, classically Wednesday nights through the years for a lot of us have been about family where we're able to come together as a spiritual family because that's exactly what the scriptures say that we are the body of Christ the household of God the family of God and tonight is going to be a similar kind of thing we're going to be talking about some of the transitions that are taking place 
in our, uh, in our communities as we're emphasizing and increasing the emphasis on our peer group, our, we call them life stages, so we have more opportunities to fellowship together, to be able to serve together, and we're going to continue talking about that transition that, uh, it, you know, is underway in many, in many ways already. We're also going to be able to talk about, for a few minutes, our generosity season of giving. How about that? That is, a, that is, a, is so much good has been done through the years through our Generosity Sunday season of giving and classically we set a goal somewhere around 10 times what we normally give on a weekly basis to be able to to support international missions, southeast missions, the swamp, local missions, our lighthouse helping pay off the mortgage there because we're leaving a legacy here for our kids and our grandkids here at Austin Ave and in our relationships in the kingdom. So We'll have a real quick update, you know, about that. And main thing I'm going to say about that is uh, to keep our focus over these next few weeks in this season of giving on on prayer. Midweeks, actually, Wednesday nights in the American religious kind of uh, uh, background started about a little over 100 years ago as a prayer meeting. Did you know that? They came together primarily to be able to pray because they understood, well, not only the need to do that in the middle of a hectic week, but also how, how much power can really take place there. And so each year when we talk about Generosity Sunday season, one of the most important aspects of this is our prayer life that we pray not only individually in our families, even in our small groups, but as we pray together. We've done this in so many ways. Many of you will remember the prayer chain, the continuous prayer chain that we did for so many years. And so many of you, we know your spot, like our one of our new elders, Brian Hawkins, was always at 5 a.m. every morning praying, anchoring down the chain with so many of you. We actually... Uh, uh, did it a little bit different last year. We had uh, some Zoom times of prayer, I think three times during the day. And this year, we're doing something even a little bit more, uh, a little different still. You remember during our time of fasting in January, we had specific times where we would pause wherever we were at certain times of the day, and we'd pray and we'd have a certain emphasis at that 7 a.m. prayer or the noon prayer or the 7 p.m. prayer. Well, we're going to do a very similar thing this year. And so there are going to be four times of prayer. We're going to begin this next Sunday. Uh, is it the 14th or the 21st? 21st. Okay, a week from Sunday. And as you can see, we're going to have certain times at, I believe it starts at 8, and we'll focus in on international missions at 12 on Southeast missions, at 4 p.m. on our local missions, and then 8 p.m. on our lighthouse and God using our church campus, you know, to his glory. This is an interesting thing. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing to be able to set your, your alarm on your phone, and wherever you are, it goes off, and you might only have 10 seconds to pray. You might take 10 minutes. Uh, you might join a friend. You may text somebody before and after. And it, but it, this is a practical way uh, to implement many scriptures. I'll give you just one. This is the second scripture we had our children, Ryan and Ashley, memorize when they were young children. The first, as we all know, and our elders did a good job reminding us of that last Sunday, children, obey your parents <laughs> In the Lord, for this is right. That was the first verse that they memorized. The second one was rejoice always, pray what? Continually, Continually giving thanks. This is one of the ways that we can do that, to actually pray continually. There are many passages on that, and our morning and our evening prayers are so meaningful, the prayers we have with each other. But to be able to pray throughout the day in short uh, little moments for each other or for special needs, it's going to be a great way for us all to do this together because it's not by might, it's not by power, it's not even by money, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Zechariah chapter 4 and in verse 6. And so in just a few minutes, uh, John Dakota is going to come and to lead us in our prayer uh, tonight. But first of all, I want to uh, uh, be able to uh, let us hear from our administrator 
CFO, all-round amazing person, <laughs> Vivian Haynes. Let's welcome her up to the stage. Yes. Oh my gosh, he's something else, right? Well, I was thinking today, how do I get out of this? They always put me to do this. So I found a way to get out of it tonight. So I'm going to present somebody special to you today. You know, this church is so blessed. We are all so blessed with so many of us that have such gifts that God gives us, whether it's amazing skills, education, or just the, the gift of just serving. And so we have an amazing board of directors. Let's have a applause for them. They are amazing. And so tonight, one of those board members is going to do the financial presentation. His name is Dev uh, Dennis Pickens. You all know who he is. He's a great, great disciple. He's been here from when we had the Edge or the Singles Ministry and found his beautiful wife sitting right over there uh, and married her here at North River. And now he serves on the board of directors in the finance committee. And I thought, who else would be best to do it but somebody in the finance committee that actually oversees even the work that I do. And so he's going to come here and he's going to present it tonight. Good evening, church. Thank you guys for this opportunity. It's an honor to serve on the board of a church that's generous. And when I think about the generosity of this church, and when I think about tonight's topic, I think about this scripture. It's in Luke chapter 6, verse 38, one that you guys have heard before, but I ask that you look at it with fresh eyes tonight. Uh, Luke 6, verse 38 says, Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. I like that scripture because um, for the context of it, back in the Bible times, merchants, generous merchants would, um, sorry, my alarm's going off here. <laughs> generous merchants, they had a practice of putting grain in jars and they would press down the grain so they can get as much of it in there into that measuring jar that they would have so that when their customers would come, they would just pour them all out. And it would be more than what they thought they were going to be given. So when I think about that, I think about the generosity that you guys have exercised over the past year. What this shows is how much in generosity that was collected over this past fiscal year. That was 500 Oh, sorry, five, uh, five, uh, $513,000 is that much, I, I was stuttering. Over, over half a million, yes, that deserves a hand clap. And that money was put into various jars or buckets, if you will. So the first bucket is the lighthouse. So our lighthouse mortgage is paid out of generosity. We have a contractual agreement that the first bucket that we have to hit with our money collected from generosity is our mortgage. Now, our mortgage is $174,000. So it's like 34% of what was given. That's a lot. The next bucket is international. So when you think of international, think of all the work that we do spreading God's word and the mission throughout the world. So that's money that's going to our European mission, Africa, and of course, Caribbean. In addition to that, we also helped to fund and over the years have funded Douglas Jacoby. So that's what goes into our international bucket. And that's $147,000 if you have, are having a little trouble seeing it. The next bucket is local. That's $142,000. And that bucket's an interesting one because we, we fund our interns out of that bucket. So I know a lot of us are always asking, hey, can we get more interns? Well, that's how we're funding them, through our local bucket. In addition to that, we fund our youth and family ministry. And then uh, lastly, we're also funding trainers for our local school of missions. So that's what comes out of our, our local bucket, and that's $124,000. Then our last bucket, Southeast bucket, 
which we uh, had $68,000 in. And that's where we fund our guy we all know and love, Jack Frederick, to go out and to help serve our churches throughout the Southeast as a shepherd. In addition to that, we, you know, of course, over the years have also funded the, the swamp. You know, we've helped them pay down their mortgage, and they've gotten to the point where that's paid down. So we're now we're considering what kind of support we're going to give them going forward. So stay tuned for that. Um, in addition, I'm just looking at my notes here, so bear with me. Um, it's also a catch-all bucket in a lot of ways where we help to fund some of the missions from some of our local churches like Auburn, Tuskegee as well. So um, those funds may shift depending on needs, but that's what we have. And this is a view of what we've done over the past fiscal year. So now looking forward, this is, what, this is where our goals were and are for, for this year. So our goal is to raise $450,000 for generosity. The thermostat shows where we are today, and we're going to bring this back so you guys can see this on a weekly, weekly uh, cadence. As I said earlier, the first thing that we have to fund out of our generosity is what? Our lighthouse. So where we are, this shows where we are now. We're not quite there, but we're getting there. You know, we're at $159,000. We have to get to 174 to fund our, our lighthouse. So we're slowly working towards that. And again, we're going to bring this back so you guys can see where, we, where we're at. But again, once we get to that 450, God willing, it's going to go into those buckets that we showed earlier. So moving forward. Now switching gears slightly, we're looking at our weekly contribution. So this is what we, we need to keep the church lights on. So as we look at this, I'm just going to make it easy for you. If you're looking at those lines, the, our goal and where we should be is for, roughly 48 k a week. That's what we want to be, $48,000 a week. Where have we been averaging? We've been averaging around 43 k a week. We need that 48 k for our budget to balance. So I know what you guys are thinking, okay, we're falling short. So how are, we, how are we keeping the lights on? Well, again, thankfully, we have some very generous members, and I thank God for you all. So those, that, that funding gap between the 48 and the 43 that we're seeing on a weekly basis is being funded through reserves. It's being funded through some financial products like CDs that are, are financial genius and CFO, Vivian and uh, John, have been making the dollar stretch for us. And then it's also been funded through, again, you all, through bonuses, inheritance, just various windfalls that God has blessed you with and you guys have blessed the church with. So as we're looking for, what's the call to action? What's the, what's the, what's the path for? What's the action item, if you will? It's to, to keep on giving. You know, I've been reminded I'm part of the, the younger generation, you know, and, you know, as the younger generation, we're called to give too. We're called to step up because this is a family and what does a family do? Everyone pulls their weight. And as I think about my heart to give, I just think about, you know, the gratitude I have for this church and everyone who's been a part of it, who's touched my life. And as Vivian has mentioned, I met my wife here. I, I, I was baptized here in the corner when it was a baptistry there. This church has given so much to me. So it's only right that I pay that for and I give to the church to spread God's mission. So that is the financial update. I hope I covered mostly everything. Vivian, Vivian's going to pick up the slack if I missed anything. <laughs> Thanks, man. You got a thumbs up from Vivian. You, you got something there. So that's good. Um, we're going to pray. So let's bow our heads, please. Father, after talking about all of these finances and all of the money and the things that, that come up regarding balancing budgets and goals, the most important thing that we want to focus on is how you move and the way that you move. Uh, for nearly 20 years, uh, so much has been done here through North River, through your grace, through the generosity of people, and we're really thankful. We're, we're thankful because we can think back to all of the stories and the memories and the things that the people that have come up on stage that have sent YouTube videos that uh, 
uh, you know, just express the gratitude and the thanks and the things that we won't necessarily experience personally because we're not there. Uh, we're not in the context, but we know that it matters so much to those people that receive the benefits of the money and the things that they're able to do and the, the, the people that get helped. So we're grateful. And we are just praying that again this year that, that you will help, help us to find ways to be generous, help us to find money that we didn't know was coming in or stuff that we didn't think was gonna happen uh, or, or even just the good old fashioned planning that goes into being intentionally generous. So thank you for everybody here and the rich history that we have that we can look back on and look to you with such gratitude about uh, the things that we, we believe and we trust that you're gonna continue to do. So you know where the money can come from. We're looking to you. You know, God, I, I guess I'm just thinking about even the Knights who are on their way to Ghana, uh, to, which is one of the congregations that's benefited and they're going to do a marriage retreat, but God, what a refreshing thing uh, for us to have that connection. And so we pray for them to have a, a, a very encouraging time there uh, and to be able to support the congregation. Uh, Father, we're also gonna be talking about uh, the next, the rest of the year here at North River and, and transitions to life stages. And we pray that you will continue to give us wisdom uh, as we make this shift and uh, just meet needs. Uh, thank you for all the people that, that volunteer so generously uh, on an ongoing basis to help people get their needs met here at North River. We're very grateful. Uh, thank you for your kindness. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I hope you caught that, that the, the Knights are uh, on their way to Ghana. That's pretty, that's pretty encouraging uh, to do a marriage retreat. Uh, really encouraged and inspired by, by the Knights. And I, I was inspired by my man Dennis up here sharing and giving the presentation. You know, I'm like, I remember studying the Bible with Dennis. Dennis, see, Dennis is a big wig now. He missed the Home Depot. He, he all big up in there, one of the top people at Home Depot, always getting awards, always getting promoted. But I remember Dennis's apartment. I'm going to tell you something about that man. <laughs> there wasn't nothing on the walls. We sat on like soccer chairs with like a box in the middle and as the, t as the table. You've come a long way, my brother. Amen. <laughs> The Lord has blessed him with a beautiful wife as well, so good stuff. Um, so, hey, tonight, hopefully, here's the deal with tonight. I'm going to tell it to you straight up. Here's the deal. So we're giving you a lot of information, all right? Some of y'all like that, and some of y'all don't. <laughs> That's just the way it is. So tonight, you know, you're gonna get a, we're going to try to communicate to you why and what and all of that. Some of you might be like, man, I'm good. Just give me the big picture. I'm good. I love it. I'm good. And others, you're going to email like, thank you so much. And some of you are going to be like, I want more information, right? That's just the way it is. So I don't know where you are. If you, you, know, if you have, might have to stand up and stretch or something, that's cool. But we're going to try to give you uh, hopefully an overview of where we are and why we're doing what we're doing, okay? And not just assume you can figure it out. Uh, one of the passages that's... Uh, I think inspiring to me, uh, in Ephesians 5, we've been in Ephesians, obviously, as a church, but when, uh, when Paul writes, follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. And uh, I think all of us have that heart to to follow God's example, but hopefully we are grateful to be considered children and we're in a family, you know, we get to, and we get to walk, you know, in the way that Jesus walked, a life of love and a life of sacrifice and willing to look to others' needs and not just his own. And, um, and so I just want to remind you, like, what we're doing as a church, we are trying to be a spiritual family, and it's a lot of people in this particular family going in a lot of different directions all over metropolitan Atlanta area. And, uh, but here we are trying our best to, to be together and connect with each other. And uh, I just want you to remind you that over the last year or so, 
We've tried to ask and get input from you, and uh, you've filled out surveys, and you've come to meetings and given, raised your hand and given your thoughts and input on how we could maybe do things a little bit better around here. And, uh, and honestly, we, we, we've tried to do some listening over this last year and a half, and hopefully, uh, in moments like tonight, previously, we've given you the survey results and all the things, but I hope you realize we've been trying to listen. And just so you know, people from like, I even think some high school students gave their input all the way up to people in their 70s, and I'm not exaggerating. And so we've listened and we've tried to hear, and, and tonight is kind of, in a lot of ways, putting all that together and trying to move forward with it. And so the reality is we believe that we are trying to walk the way of Jesus together. That's a big word, together. Uh, because in our culture, obviously, the individualism is so strong that sometimes the together part is hard. But that's what we're trying to do. We're trying, that's our vision. Yes, we might be all over Metro Atlanta, all different ages, all different backgrounds and all that, but we're trying to do whatever we do at North River. We're trying to cultivate a togetherness and a doing it for family. So whatever you hear tonight, at the end of the day, the stuff we're trying to do, whatever structure we have, at the end of the day, we're trying to get us to do things together as a family and to grow to be more like Jesus. That, at the end of the day, that's what we're trying to do. There's no one way to do church. But this is the way we've listened to you, and we're trying to process all the information, and this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to do it this way. Um, and so here's some slides that can help you understand kind of the heart of where we're going and why we do what we do. And we really do feel like we partner with God's spirit, right, to, to, to help all people grow into fully devoted followers of Jesus. That's what, that's what we're here to do. That's what we're trying to do. And we see the vision of us doing all of that together, right, in a spiritual family, not just be church attenders, but to come here and to be spiritually transformed into the likeness of Jesus, and to have strong blood families, amen, I'm all for that, right? Some of us have got your mom, dad, right, your kids and all that. We want our families to be strong, and we also want a single person or a high school kid to feel like this is their family too, right, that we're all connected to each other. And so as we're growing to be more like Jesus, hopefully we can live like those dearly loved children and connect together as a spiritual family. That's what we're trying to do. So whatever you hear tonight, those are the two main areas of focus. Can we grow spiritually together, and can we do it and feel like a family? That's going to be our challenge with 800-something-odd people. But really, that's kind of the, the visual. We know some of y'all are visual learners. Amen. So we're trying to give you some visuals. Jesus as the foundation, amen, and the house, right, the, the, the foundation of God. And those circles in there are each family group. We got so many family groups all over the Atlanta area, and we want to come together as his spiritual family. And this is kind of the, the visual that we want to give you with. And we know that Sunday is going to happen. We appreciate Sundays. We've been, we come here, we worship, we sing, we take the Lord's Supper, and that's a unique moment. And we are going to continue to do those collective things. And, and amen, hopefully those are helpful to you. And we also hope that the family group where you are connected and able to connect in a smaller setting is beneficial to you as well, where you can build family and grow spiritually. You know, and our life stages are trying to support that, right? So on Sunday morning, sometimes we'll have a life stage service for the pace setters or the youth and family. Again, we're trying to kind of meet those needs and encourage and connect and do it together. We even have those Bible classes that we've been offering because you've really wanted those. We've had the grief class, the financial peace. Those are the types of things that we've been doing as well in response to what we've heard from you. We really do believe this. You know, I grew up spiritually in a church uh, where we'd have a midweek service like this, and after every single midweek service, we rented out a hotel, by the way, so we didn't have our own building. So after every midweek service, each family group would just find a spot and just circle up. And we'd, we'd, ha we'd just hang out, connect, what's been going on, what's going on? And, I, and that, that was our weekly rhythm, just connecting after a midweek, just in a circle. Uh, th just something small like that just built so much. And uh, it's not that you can't grow coming to church on Sunday. That is, that's not what we're saying. But we do believe strongly that we want you to be in circles, you know, smaller groups, family groups. That's where the spiritual magic can happen so well. 
It's so hard to connect deeply in a big room, right? And some of us don't even like crowds. But here's the deal. We are offering these family groups to help you grow, and we want you to see that. Here's the deal. I'm going to be real with you. I don't think it's great if all you do is come to Sunday or, or show up to an event. So I just want to just say that as one of your spiritual leaders. We just don't think you're going to derive the, what you can out of this spiritual family if all you do is attend on Sunday, listen to podcasts during the week, and then maybe pop into an event here or there. I just don't think that's what, that, that's what this is all about. And here's the deal. Is it hard to get all of us to, to get in family groups? Yes, it is hard to do that with this many people. But you know what? We're not going to quit just because it's too hard and go, ah, it's too hard. Let's just, let's just do a good Sunday and hope it works out. Because that's the, that's the temptation. I'll be honest with you. That's the temptation. But we're not doing it. We're going to keep fighting. We're going to keep trying to get into smaller groups and hope that somehow, some way, we can start feeling more and more like family. Because that's what we all really want deep in our hearts. And so the building block of this church is the family group. It's not the Sunday service, okay? We're trying to get our small groups connected and, and tight. And so here we are. We've been in communities, right? We've had different communities spread out all over Atlanta. That's what we've had. We've been living and operating in that way. Guess what we found out? During COVID, it was helpful. It sure was. We were able, we would even hear from family group leaders, man, I got more attendance now over Zoom than I ever had, you know? And so we were grateful for the structure that was there during a really weird and tough time. Uh, and so the communities, I think they helped us in a lot of ways. Here's where the communities fell short. We found that they didn't really do a great job of supporting the family groups. The leaders weren't connected, supported that well. It's just, it was a reality. We got the feedback, we heard it. And so now, after all this year of surveys, asking questions, praying with people, fasting, getting input, we feel like now we've got something that we feel like is a, is a way to structure our family <laughs> so that our, our small groups can get supported in a more effective way and we can build spiritually with each other together. We feel like that's what we've been able to do with what we're gonna share with you tonight. And now Jordan is gonna come up and share a little bit more with you on what that looks like as we try to trans go from transition from communities to our focusing by supporting our family groups through life stages. So, there you Amen. Go. All right. Clicker. Clicker. There Got go. it. Got it. You know, we've been going through Ephesians. Jeff read a verse. It's good to read the Bible when we're together, right? So I'll read out of Ephesians 4 before we continue. And uh, in Ephesians 4, verse 11, this is the North River edition, all right? So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers to equip his people at North River for works of service so that North River may be built up until we all and every family group will reach unity in the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God and that North River may become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Don't we want that together here as a family, that we can be mature, that we can attain the fullness, the whole measure of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He continues, then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning, cunning and craftiness of people and their deceitful scheming. Paul was writing this 2,000 years ago before social media, before podcasts, before YouTube. Can you imagine how much more deceitful scheming that can get into our minds now? Instead, instead as a church, instead as North River, instead we speaking the truth in love at North River, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. Because none of us are the heads. There's only one head that we're built off, and that's Jesus Christ. From him, the whole body at North River, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as, we each, uh, as each part does its work. I don't know if you knew Paul wrote that letter to us. It's kind of a new edition. You know, we went back and ChatGBT found it. It was amazing. But I really hope that we, when we read passages like this, we're thinking that this wasn't just for them, but we're trying to figure out how, what it's like for us too. 
And, you know, the body of Christ, you know, continues to talk about and all these supporting ligaments. There's a bunch of different ways we can have those supporting ligaments. There's a bunch of different ways that the body can be structured. But at the end of the day, what we've learned is that we need an intentionality for how we're structured. We need an intentionality for how each part can be taken care of. And we need a way where we can feel great about moving forward all as one family with the goal of being fully mature. And so we've done that by supporting our family groups and our communities. And we're really excited to talk about tonight about this transition that's coming up because we're excited to talk about how we're going from supporting our family groups in our communities to supporting our family groups in our life stage ministries. And we're really excited about this transition here where we'll be able to do more for our family groups, be able to support our family groups in more unique and intentional ways in our life stage uh, ministries. We think that this is going to help us to support our family groups better. We're really excited about all the needs in our life stages that we'll be able to meet. Even when you continue in Ephesians, time and time again throughout the scriptures, Paul or the writer will come and talk about, well, let me talk to the marrieds for a moment, like we did on Sunday, right? Or let me talk to the parents for, the, for a moment. Or let me talk to the young men, like, first, like John does in 1 John 1, where there's specific needs in specific life stages. And we, we believe that if we focus more on the life stage ministries, we can meet those specific needs. We also believe that we can find a deeper sense of family in our life stage ministries. When we come together with our peers, when we come together in smaller groups, even, I don't know if you felt that when you've gone up and had the life stage rotational Sunday service and you walk into a group of 100, that it just naturally felt a little bit more like family. Then walking into a group of 800, now we're all 800, our family, but there's something about learning to know most people in the room that helps you feel more connected, doesn't it? And we want to lean into that more and more. We also believe that as we focus on our life stage ministry, supporting our family groups in that way, that it will help us open the gospel in whole new ways. Because there's just something so powerful about when a couple singles are reaching out to a single that it's so relatable. And there's something so powerful for those of us in the world that have come from the world. When we see someone just like us, someone that's experiencing what I'm experiencing or living what I'm experiencing, and when we see them follow Jesus in my context, that helps me see that it's actually possible to follow Jesus in my context. And so we think this is going to bless us in so many ways. And yet... One of the things that we're excited about most in this model that was different than the last model is that in each life stage, we're going to have not just one community leader or one life stage leader, but we're going to have life stage core teams where there's a team of people focused on supporting our family groups. And so it'll look a little something like this, where there's going to be staff in every life stage ministry. There's going to be elders specifically focused on shepherding each life stage ministry. And then we're also going to have some mentors that are there to, you know, give and support our different family group leaders. And we believe that this team, all working together, will be able to serve and to give to the church more than any just one community leader could in the past. Because our main goal, if our building block is the family group, our main goal is always, well, how can we support the family group? And we think that these teams can do that. And you might be asking, well, you know, we had all these, this time last year with the survey and all those all church midweeks, why are we just doing this now? Well, one of the main reasons, honestly, was we felt like we didn't want to do this without elders in each life stage. And so we, we took the time to, to talk to new you know, elder candidates and to bring it before you and to appoint new elders before we did this because we wanted elders to shepherd each life stage. And instead of feeling like there's just a few elders for all 800 of us, now for, for us 100, we know exactly the faces of the elders that are here to shepherd us. And we believe that connection and those relationships is going to provide a powerful synergy together. So who are the life stage uh, core teams? Who are the staff or the elders in each life stage? Well, we're going to have other volunteer or other amazing mentors and other leaders to be able to be a part of these core teams. But tonight, we wanted to talk about just the staff or the elders in each life stage so that we could all start to get a feel of that. And, um, and here, so here's the life stage core teams in our life stages. We have Campus, Thrive, Young Families, soon to be changed to a different name because you, YF, YF is really difficult, Young Families, Youth and Family, but Young Families, Youth and Family, and Pace Setters. And if you bear with me for a moment, we're just going to walk through who's in each one. Is that cool as a family talk? 
Here we go. So for the campus, it's not the Masseys. It's the incredible Alberts. It is the Alberts and Nandi Trawick and the De Leons are going to be supporting the campus. We're really excited about that. And the Thrive, it's the Knights and it's the Broyles and the Rowans are going to be supporting and giving to the Thrive ministry. And the Young Families, it's the Masseys. We're pumped about that. And, uh, and we're going to be focusing on young families with some awesome staff members like the Tolix and the younger Macintoshes. And then to bring the wisdom that have gone before us, the Adkins and the Hawkins are really going to be serving and the young families together. By the way, young families, we're going to have a great service this Sunday up in the Lighthouse. And our young families, we're expanding it to if you're a young family without kids where you feel like we haven't had kids yet, we've been married for five, 10 plus years, or maybe we're not planning on having kids or we can't have kids, we wanna be around our peers. We're not just talking about parenting as young families. So if you're a young family without kids, you can also join us up the hill on Sunday. But in youth and family, uh, we have the cheers are shifting to really help out our youth and family. We're pumped about that. So the cheers and the shafts are gonna be focused from the staff perspective on the youth and family, along with the Reese's, the Dakotas, and the Channers, what incredible families to help give to our youth and family. And then in the pace setters, uh, there's going to be the senior Macintoshes, the Browns, and the Haynes and the Malutnox as elders to really be able to help out. And that, of course, in the pace setters, most of the pace setters could lead that ministry. Y'all have a wealth of wisdom. That is incredible of your experience. But that's what we got. And we're excited that in each life stage, we're not just looking to one person or one couple to meet all the needs. But there's these teams. We really believe in team leadership here at North River. And for a long time, uh, you know, the Browns and, and, and the Hickmans, along with the McKenzies or the Keens, formed an incredible dynamic in our leadership group of evangelists and elders working together. And so we're trying to bring a similar model to all of our life stages where we have staff and elders working alongside each other. And of course, there's other incredible leaders that will be joining and having a major influence, our volunteer leaders and our core teams too. So that's our life stage core teams that we're excited about and how it will help our ministry. Now, you might go, well, are we, what is, what was it actually going to look like for me? And it kind of looks like this. How can family group be home base? And yet there's these other things going on. And and it kind of looks like this. We're always going to protect time in our family group. And you might go to a life stage Sunday service, but then come back to home base in your family group. Or you might sign up for a Bible course to get help meet your needs in a specific way, but you come back to family group as a home base. Or there might even be a life stage event or a life stage exciting thing going on during the week. You might go to that, but you'll come back to your family group as home base. All of these things are to support our family group. And everything that Jeff was just leaning into, we believe that this way can really help support and to give to our family groups in an even more powerful way to help us move forward together as a church. So when are we planning on doing this? Uh, here's a little timeline. So our, our, our next all, ch- uh, all church family group leaders meeting is on April 21st. The second half of that, we're having a Life Stage Ministries family group leaders meeting. And so we'll be able to split up and figure out who's our new f- group of family group leaders we're going to be connecting with and going through life together with. Uh, if you are interested in helping lead a family group as we're making this transition, this would be a great uh, meeting to come to on the 21st to figure out what's going on and how you can help out. Uh, The staff calls May mayhem because there's always way too much stuff going on in May. And Jurassic Sunday, fifth grade graduation, high school honoring, CTP, Pentecost, all these amazing things. We're doing that in May. But then for this conversation, the transition from supporting our family groups and communities to supporting our family groups by Life Stage Ministries is happening on June 1st. And we're really excited about that because what it's going to do over the summer as we transition to this will give us a lot of times just to connect as family in our new Life Stage Ministries and get to know one another at barbecues or have fun outdoor services and all those kinds of things to really build relationships and start to build that new family in our Life Stage Ministries. So guys, we're, we're pumped about this and we believe that this can be a transitional period at North River that can bless this church and help us have more of a family than we've had in a really long time and help us mature more than we have in a really long time through this transition. Our vision is not just this transition. 
It's so much more than that, but this is the structural piece of our vision. You know, Nick Schaff made all of these uh, slides, so you can thank him when you see them. And he put together this cool graphic that I'm not going to try to explain, but it looks really cool of how you enter the family at North River. And at some point, I'm sure we'll walk through this. He said, don't use it, but I said, bro, it's way too cool not to use it. So there you go. You can, you can figure that one out on your own. <laughs> but guys, I, I, am, I am genuinely excited about where we're going as a church. And I'm excited about what God's doing. And as we lean into our peer relationships, as we lean into this new family and on, on a smaller level to connect, to grow, to reach out to our peers, I believe God will use this to make an impact on us in a way that we haven't had in a long time and to make an impact on our communities in a way that we haven't had in a long time. You know, we've spent all last year having meetings, but also praying and fasting and listening to the spirits. We truly believe God is leading us into the next phase of North River, and we're excited to do it together. And so we, just in case you have questions about this, we're about to shift into a time of frequently asked questions. And I'm going to ask my brother Sherwin McIntosh to come up and walk us through this. Thank you. Is this on? There you go. Thank JJ in the back there. She's running the microphones. <laughs> Thank you, JJ. JJ is our first sister uh, working sound for us, so leading the way for many to come, I'm sure. Um, this has been great, right? To be, do you feel like you understand what's going on? We've been slow to roll this out, but just wanted to really be able to uh, help everybody to gradually understand this. And we did get so many things in the, re, uh, in the surveys about we need more help in our life stages. And we need more focus with the young families being able to meet together, have, have needs met there. Uh, in Thrive, being able to see that happen more. And certainly Thrive has been doing a great job uh, as an example of that already. So we're excited about these family groups. We're excited about the pace setters. All of you, yes, thank you. <laughs> Frequently asked questions, okay. I do wanna thank the, uh, the transition team uh, as well as our uh, vision team that have spent countless hours on this. Can we recognize them and thank all of them, people that have helped out with that? <clears throat> So number one, how does this affect my family group? It should not, okay? The, we are not doing a massive overhaul of our family groups. They will mostly be staying the same. However, we understand during any transition, there are always some organic changes that somebody might want to change, but the idea is that family groups will stay the same, and that's what we've told you from the beginning, and that is the plan. Uh, number two, are we going to have life stage midweeks every week? No. The goal is to protect our time in what? Family groups, right. Uh, the family group will still remain the main source of fellowship and encouragement during the week. Uh, the life source core, core teams and the family group leaders will decide if supplemental events or midweeks are needed or would be helpful to that life stage. But Basically, we'll still be doing our family groups uh, for the midweeks. Uh, number three, what if it's not clear which life stage I should participate in? We know that there are some people in these categories that are not sure what life stage they're going to participate in, but we encourage you to attend a life stage and see if that's a good fit for you. We want to make sure that there, there is a place for everyone to flourish, and so you may not be and exactly one, fit in one category, but a lot of us are like that. You're, maybe you're, you're in youth and family or you're in young families as well. You got kids in both places, where do you go? Figure that out. Go visit one of the Sunday services and see which one is a good fit for you. Um, what if it's not clear? I did that, right? Yes, okay. The next one, <laughs> last one. What if my family group is blended with people in multiple life stages? <laughs> We've always talked about intergenerational. You know, that's okay. <laughs> we love our intergenerational family groups. 
Uh, we recognize that this will take some time to work through it uh, with some members going to different services, but you will always be back together in your family group. Uh, but we believe that those blended family groups can also flourish with support of our life stage core teams. So those are some of the, the main questions that we've had. I hope that helps to answer some of your concerns. If you have any other concerns, Jordan is sitting right over here. Because <laughs> that's all the questions and the answers I've got. Uh, so he has all the others. No, if you to see some of the, the, the family group leaders, uh, to see some of the life stage leaders, and they can be able to help you sort through that. But, we're just asking the Spirit to move and for God to help us and direct us. And this, we're still one body, we're still one church, and you're like, well, what's changing? Well, just a little bit different ways to help in your life stage where you are in life right now. But we're going to close out with a prayer here. Is my brother Ray Rowan here? Ray is having surgery in the morning, so I didn't expect him to, <laughs> to pop up here. But uh, if we could be remembering him in a special way, that'll be at 8 o'clock in the morning uh, to be praying for our brother Ray. But uh, let's all join together in prayer here. God, we, we just come before you with uh, humble hearts and uh, just with uh, joy, really being together tonight and uh, so many uh, warnings about the weather and things going on outside. But God, it's just great to be safe here inside and to uh, know that a little rain is not going to keep us away from each other. And God, I do pray that you continue to bless the church here and continue to bless uh, the ministries that are represented, the life stages that we're trying to emphasize now more, and uh, just to be helped to walk with one another, uh, to be able to work together uh, in our life stages and, and still maintain our family groups and our people that are close to us uh, geographically. Um, whatever works, God, we just want to get each other to heaven. And that is our main goal. And God, we do pray for our, our brother, our, my fellow elder, uh, Ray Rowan, uh, as he's going into surgery tomorrow. God, he is such a servant to this church uh, and has been for so many years and to all of our sister churches here in Atlanta. Just pray that you'd really bless him, uh, be with Princess, uh, be with their whole family to bless them, and especially in the surgery tomorrow. God, we thank you for Jesus. Thank you that uh, he is the author and the finisher of our faith. God, I do pray that you would uh, be with uh, our upcoming Generosity Sunday as well, and, and to know that our, our main goal in life is to spread Jesus to every person that we can. And God, help us as we, we know how to finance that, as we know how to, to send out people, as we grow in our knowledge and our maturity, uh, to be able to be more effective for you, for Jesus. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You are dismissed. <laughs>